used for checking algorithms before the coding begins. So once you've developed your algorithm using pseudocode, you need to use a trace table. So the trace table is a formal way to find any logical errors within your algorithm. So the idea is that it's going to save you time in the end testing once you've actually built your prototype. It allows you to figure out any tricky logic uh, within your program before you start coding. So you need to test all the variables and all the conditions. There's two methods. There's the uh, long version, which is taught in 2AB, and there is the condensed method, which is done in the 3AB. So this video is going to focus on the condensed method. So the condensed method is a lot more compact. It takes up a lot less lines, um, which makes it a lot easier. However, it can be a little bit more complicated. Um, because you can sort of get confused a little bit between the different tables. Okay, so here's an example of uh, a trace table. So here we've got the algorithm which is written in pseudocode, which you should now be familiar with. And you'll also be given some test data. Okay, so you can see in the start in the first line of the code, uh, the largest uh, is assigned the value zero. Okay, so largest is the variable and it's assigned the value zero. Okay, next we're going to input. So we input a variable number with a value from our test data, which is 2. Okay, So the variable here, number, has a value 2. Next, we are checking the uh, logic for the if condition. So if the number is greater than the largest, so if 2 is greater than 0, and this is true, so it said is t, you can write true or you can write t go to the next um, one, we set the largest to the number. So if it's greater than 2, we'll set largest to 2. Okay, And then it will end the if, and we'll go to input the next one. Okay, So we'll input the next test data, which is 3. Okay, so 3. And it will then output the largest number so far is 2. Okay, So we set the largest number to 2, the largest is still 2, so output 2. So we're basically just working through each line of the code. Um, when we get to a loop like this, because we are repeating until uh, it is equal to uh, 999, uh, it'll loop back around. So that means for the next stage after the output, loop until number is 999, this is false, so it'll repeat again. Okay. So again, if the number is greater than the largest, so it is 3, because we're still on this test case, 3 is greater than 2, is true. Okay, so we can then loop back around. Is 3 is the next case? Input number, next case is 6. So the largest so far is 3. Okay, Then we loop it again because it doesn't equal 999 yet. Okay, So that's false. And then we check the case again. If the number which we inputted before was 6 is greater than 3, which is true, then the largest becomes 6. We then input the next number, which is 5. The largest output so far is 6. OK, keep on going until it equals 99. That's still false, so we loop around again. OK, so the number now becomes 7. And the largest so far is 6. And then we can check. Yep, it's still not equal to 99, so we loop around again. If it's greater. And then we input 7 again into the 999. Largest so far is 7. Check the logic. Yeah, check the logic. Largest number is 7 because it equals 99, we have ended our algorithm. Okay, so that enables us to check through uh, complex algorithms 
check with a, a set of data. So when you're checking with your data, you need to make sure you check with a, a range, make sure you check single digits as well as higher digits, not just the ones which make it easier for you to calculate. Uh, you need to actually check odd numbers, even numbers, floats, all those sort of things to see if your algorithm will actually break. Um, in an exam situation, they'll give you the test data, they'll tell you where to input it, and then you'll be able to set it out. Sometimes they give you the variables at the top, sometimes they don't. Um, but either way, you should be able to determine based on the order of the algorithm where the different column headings will come from. So in this case, you can see that line one has a variable called the largest, which gets assigned a value zero, so largest will be the first. Then we input a number, so number is there. Then we have a condition, so we have that there. Then we have the number, which we've already input, so we can put that there. Okay, and then we have the loop until. Okay, so it's fairly simple. You just need to work through them. You need to practice a couple of times, and then you should get the hang of it.